Hi guys, welcome back to Move For You. Um, great to be with you. Sorry it's been so long since I did a video. Um, we've been doing crazy amounts of work on our house. So, um, baby is due in two months. So we're trying to hurry it up. So a lot of you requested to have a video on how I ship my breast milk. So this is that video. Whether you are a mommy or one of my customers who buys it, um, this would be helpful for, for any of you. Um, first off, I ship with dry ice. Why do I ship with dry ice? So dry ice is actually it turns out to be the least, um, or the most, excuse me, the most cost-effective way to ship breast milk. Um, a lot of people will, when I am in there getting ice, they'll ship with regular ice and a cooler or dry ice, one of those flip coolers that you hold lunches with. And those like have to be overnighted. You cannot do standard shipping with them. And overnighting, as you guys know, is very expensive and you cannot do anything over than 10 pounds of ice. Otherwise, obviously, the plane would blow up, um, oxygen levels, things like that kind of decrease. So, um, not a real good idea to do um, that kind of thing unless your customer doesn't mind paying overnight shipping. But then they're kind of limited to how much milk they can um, get at one time. So, I choose dry ice and standard shipping because it is the most cost effective way for my customers to get the most amount of milk for their money. They can do standard shipping um, anywhere from three to five days and it still gets there frozen, you guys. Like, I follow up with all my customers and they all say that it's all still frozen. So, that is why I do it. Um, I never ship in the middle of the week. Um, I always ship on a Monday, maybe Tuesday. Um, the reason for this is if there's a delay or you know, some for some reason that something gets lost for, uh, well, a delay <laughs> for some reason that um, the people can still have frozen milk and it's not sitting in the facility for days, you know, three days going nowhere. So I ship on Monday to allow for um, disturbances, slows, delays, things like that. Um, what else was I going to say about that? Dry ice places are usually a one man show. So you have to be careful. You don't just show up like they need to, you need to call them. Um, heaven forbid they take a lunch, um, things like that. My dry ice guy's only there till four o'clock and he gets there at seven. So I made the mistake one time of getting there right at seven o'clock in the morning. And I got there, got it, my package to FedEx and it sat at FedEx all day to like five o'clock when they decided to take it. So I'm guessing they have multiple deliveries that go out, but for some reason, they seem to take this type of thing in the evening. So now, knowing this, I purposely will call my dry ice guy, make sure he's there. He usually leaves between 3.30 and 4. So if he's there till 4, I will actually go there around 3.30, and then, um, so it's, you know, sitting at FedEx the least amount of time that it has to. And that way I'm, I'm at FedEx by about 4 o'clock, um, things like that, that kind of makes things better for the milk. It's not sitting in a warm facility, um, getting warm all day before it decides to move. So, so as far as shipping, shipping is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, like I said, a lot of places aren't open all the time. So you spend a lot of your day running way across town and back and with little people. It's kind of hard. If you're like me and you have multiple toddlers, that can be kind of challenging. Um, but with dry ice, you cannot just throw the milk in and put dry ice on top of it. Um, that would not go very well. Dry ice can actually eat through plastic bags and things like that. So I'm going to show you how I package with dry ice and then anything else um, that I've kind of figured out. This is just the way I do it, you guys. If there's a different way that you know of that's helpful, please post in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Um, this is just my method that I've, my method, excuse me that I have kind of worked down from the past four years of doing this. Okay, so you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need um, a cooler, I guess is the main thing. And you want the cooler, the least amount of air that gets into the box or in between the box and the cooler is key to keeping your milk frozen. Um, dry ice only sells, the, the least amount you can buy is 10 pounds. 
um, 10 pounds usually um, doesn't fit in the standard size box. You have to do the bigger box, which they cost a lot of money. I use um, cool, just the medical grade coolers. And this actually fits so well in there, it's really hard to get out. But you can see like there's no air between there. It's like perfectly, perfectly fits. So I used, to, when I worked, I used to work at a clinic where we did eye injections. So there was constant uh, medical grade boxes or coolers, should I say, um, that the, the meds came in. So I actually called them and have them save me a lot of the coolers because these run like 50, 60 bucks. Um, but they're lighter. So this will save your pa your customer, excuse me, not your patient. This will save your customer um, a ton of money. So people will ask you for a lot of quotes and um, it's important to get all their information right away. If you're spending all the time going to a site to put in, you know, because it goes by weight. So this is the lightest. Dry ice is light. Um, if you're doing all that for measurements, you might as well only do it one time. So that's what I do. Um, but you can get these at dry ice places. They just, um, they cost a lot. So I still charge for my boxes because I have to go and get them. But, okay, so you'll need a cooler with a box that fits, again, so there's the least amount of air. Um, they come in different sizes. I'll show you a couple different ones that I have. This one tends to fit about 300 ounces in. And I tend to freeze my milk um, flat. That way, in the shipping process, um, it's a little bit easier to stack. You guys can see this. I might be too far away there. This lighting is so bad. So yeah, you get the idea. I freeze it flat. I try to keep them six ounces or less. There. So that um, just even for my own, um, you know, if I actually just stepped on one, and if you step on them or you drop them, they're least likely to break because the corners aren't quite as sharp at six ounces. Um, occasionally I'll get lazy and I'll fill them up, you know, to eight ounces, but I try to keep it at six ounces or less. That is why. So, and I'm, okay. And so you'll need your cooler, your box, you need a Ziploc bag and you need a Ziploc bag with the cooler in the box, your milk obviously, and then you're going to need newspaper. You don't want the milk touching the dry ice, hence the bag, but then you also cover it with newspaper. Um, so I will line my bag. And I tend to do up and down and up and down when I package it. Because then you get the most amount of milk in there. So it looks like that. And you just keep layering it like that. Obviously you want to seal it. Then after that, put it in there. And dry ice usually ends up being about the size of a um, telephone book so you want to leave that much space in there don't fit all the way to the top otherwise you can't get the lid on the lids have a, a dip right here so you want room for that and then I top mine off with newspaper at the top and I'll show you here So you'll, you'll seal that so that it's obviously not weird looking like that. And then you'll put a newspaper like that and then the dry ice on top. And then I usually have the guys wrap um, my dry ice for me um, in like whatever. It's just like, it's almost like a newspaper wrapping. It's just like a brown wrap. So um, I'll have them wrap it. And then everything is really airtight and no air can get in there. Air is kind of your, I mean, you don't want it like super airtight and the dry ice will explode, but you want the packaging to be pretty tight 
um, so everything stays as cold as possible. So then you put the lid on, you tape it, and then I tape my box closed, obviously. And then I also make labels for mine, um, like fragile. And then of course you want your customer's name, their address, um, and you do need to get their phone number because FedEx needs to know that. Why do I choose FedEx? Um, I've had issues with others. Um, UPS I have not personally tried, only for the fact of their price point. Um, oops, sorry. There. Um, only for the price there, um, how much it costs to ship with them. Um, a lot of my clients like um, that I keep, sorry, the light's really bad right there. A lot of my clients like that I keep my, my prices down and that's because I can get them the most amount of milk at the least expensive price using this method because dry ice is about 20 to $25. It's been a while since I've shipped it now. Um, but, and then your boxes are around, you know, 40 to 50. And then I do end up, you know, charging for like shipping supplies like tape and packaging just because I, I, that stuff actually really does add up. So don't shortchange yourself. So you'll need a box, a cooler, um, dry ice, and um, stickers if you choose, but you'll really need to put on the patient, this customer, excuse me, I used to work in the medical field. You'll need um, the customer's name and address um, for sure. And then some newspaper to kind of cover up the top. So I hope this was really helpful for you. Um, if you purchased from me, um, I've had a lot of comments of saying how well you're impressed with the way I package my milk. So you already know. Um, if you're a new purchaser and you're wondering how I do it, this is how. And if you're a mommy looking to ship milk, this is the best, most cost effective way that I have found um, because of the, it's lightweight, it's fast, but it doesn't have to get there overnight. And so instead of paying like $100 to overnight, you can do literally like the $20 shipping because it can get there within the, the full standard shipping and it's not, um, it's not um, unthawed. So um, I do still ship, um, but I usually, a lot of my bodybuilders come to my house with what I have left over. I quit um, producing when Eden was nine months old and she is now 18 months old. So I'm just kind of getting rid of her little bits of milk here and there and she's still drinking some as well. So if you have any questions, comment below and I would love, love to hear from you guys. If you have any comments of how you would do it different or comments of something I didn't cover very well or you didn't understand, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I love to hear from you guys. So I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys.